Welcome to MAT 2LB booklet number 7, Geometry, lesson number 2, Circumference. So in the last lesson we talked about the perimeter of polygons including triangles and rectangles. We're going to continue our examination of perimeter in this lesson, but because we are going to be looking at a circle, a circle doesn't actually have many sides like a polygon, um, like a polygon's description indicates it should. A circle kind of has just one curvy, single length outside. Um, and when we're trying to find the perimeter of a circle, it has a special word called circumference. When we're trying to find that, we often are not provided that piece of information. Usually, we're given another two pieces of information. So let's just have a quick look at this circle right here. And in looking at it, there's two pieces of information we're often given when we're talking about a circle. The first is the diameter. And the diameter is a line drawn from one side of the circle to another to the other that goes through the middle. It has to go through that origin, the center of the circle. That's one thing that we are often given, the diameter. That's the one that goes all the way through. A second one we are often given is the radius. And the radius is the distance from the middle to any point around the outside of the circle. So again, you could have a radius over here or a radius over here. Um, but a radius always goes from the middle to any point on the outside of the circle. So those are the two pieces of information that we're often given, and we use those to calculate circumference. And the two different forms of the equation to provide us with circumference are right here. The first is the circumference equals pi times d, and I'm going to highlight some of those things. So we've got pi. That's a value you may or may not be familiar with, but for the purposes of today's calculation, we are just going to take pi, and when we see pi, we're going to substitute in 3.14. That's the value that oh, approximates pi, anyway, for our calculations. And the other piece of information in the first one here is a diameter. So anytime you're given a diameter, you're going to want to use this version of the circumference of a circle formula, pi times diameter. Uh, the second version also includes pi, so we're going to substitute in 3.14 for that. Um, but we're also given the radius in this one. So anytime we're given a radius, we're going to want to use the lower version of this equation. And again, um, I'll make a mention of it here. 2 times the radius, so 2 radii, they equal 1 diameter. So these two equations are equal. Uh, they represent the exact same thing, and essentially they are equal. They're just, it's a little bit easier way to calculate them depending on what you're given. So without further ado, let's have a look at example number 1. Calculate the circumference of the following circles. Use 3.14 for pi and round your answer to the nearest hundredth. All right, Try, uh, circle A. So there we are. Um, let's write down the pieces of information that we know first. First things first, we know that pi will be equal to 3.14 every time. The next thing we have to determine is whether we've been given a radius or a diameter. And in looking at this, I see that the line goes all the way across my circle through the middle. That means I've been given a diameter, and a diameter that measures 25 inches. From there, I'm able to determine that the best formula for me to use is this guy right here. The circumference equals pi times diameter because I've been given the diameter. So the next thing I'm going to do is write that formula out. The circumference equals pi times the diameter. Next thing I'm going to do is write in those two variables that I just wrote down there. So pi, I know to be 3.14 times the diameter, which is going to be 25. And now I'm going to use my calculator to come up with an answer. 3.14 times 25 gives me 78.5. So my circumference is going to be 78.5, and the unit of measure is inches. And that's okay, it's a tenth. We don't have to round to the nearest hundredth since we didn't make it to that place value anyway. So that's how we do example A. What I'd like you to do now is hit pause and take a crack at B on your own and see how you do. Again, use A as, an, as a model for how to do it. When you think you've got an answer, come on back and we'll see how you did. All right, you're back. Let's have a look at example B here. So we know, first things first, we know that pi is going to be equal to 3.14. And again, now we want to determine, were we given a radius or were we given a diameter? And I can see that this line goes all the way through my circle, which means that I was given a diameter and a diameter that measures 39 feet. So here we are. Next thing I'm going to do is write out the formula that includes both pi and diameter. And I'm going to start filling in the values that I know. 3.14 for pi times 39 for the diameter means that I'm going to get a circumference. Now, now I'm going to use my calculator. 3.14 times 39 is going to give me 
a circumference of 122.46 feet. Now we're just getting started in this unit, but I want to mention that the unit of measure is very important. Feet, a foot, is very different than an inch, is very different than a mile. So all of these are different measures. It's important to know exactly how big uh, or wide the spaces that we're talking about. So 122.46 feet. That's rounded to the nearest hundred, then we got the unit of measure there, so we're awesome. Now you'll notice that those first two that we were given, the first two circles, we were given the diameter. Sometimes we're going to be given the diameter. On other occasions, we're going to be given the radius. And in example two, we're going to get to work with a couple of those. So let's have a look at example two. Calculate the circumference of the following circles. Use 3.14 for pi and round your answer to the nearest hundredth. All right, let's start with example A. And by writing out one of my variables, pi, I know we will be representing with 3.14. Next thing I want to do is determine what other piece of information I've been given. Have I been given a diameter or a radius? And in this case, the point that goes from the middle to any point around the outside of my circle is called a radius, which means I've been given a radius in this case, equaling 31 feet. That means that I should be using this formula right here because it includes a radius in it. It's just going to be easier for me to manipulate. So that's the next thing I'm going to do, is write out this version of the formula. The circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius. So now let's fill in the values that we know. That's 2 times 3.14 times a radius, in this case, of 31. Now I'm going to bust out my calculator, see how we do. So 2 times 3.14 times 31 equals 194 decimal 68 and the unit of measure is going to be feet always important to get that so that is the circumference of example 2 a's circle what I'd like you to do here is hit pause and try B on your own when you think you've come up with an answer come on back and we'll see how you did okay you're back let's start by writing out the values that we know or have been given so pi is going to be equal to 3 decimal 1 4 and looking at this circle, I realize that I've been given a radius again, in that it goes from the middle to any point on the outside of that circle. And the radius is equal to 24 meters. So from here, I'm going to write out my formula with the circumference being equal to 2 times pi times r. And I'm going to fill in those values that I know. 2 times 3.14 times 24. I just copied these down over there. And now we're going to type these into our calculator. So we have 2 times 3 decimal 1 4 times 24 equals 150 decimal 7 2 and the unit of measure is going to be meters. And this is already rounded to the nearest hundredth so we are in good shape already. So this is the end of lesson number two. Go back and have a look through some of the examples if you're not 100% sure of the procedure yet and if you're feeling good about it. Head on to the worksheet and I'll see you in lesson number three.